Welcome to Charter Local Edition. I'm Tracy Young. The Pasadena Unified School District serves approximately 20,000 students with a budget that's just under $200 million. And joining us to talk about the policies the district has implemented to focus on student achievement is the district superintendent, Edward Diaz. Nice to see you, sir. Nice being here. Thank you. Why is it so important that you focus on something? I noticed I looked at a lot of your information on your website. Student achievement. What, what do you mean by that and why is it so important? Well, um, our core mission is to make sure that kids are, are well prepared uh, when they leave us in, in 12th grade to be able to succeed in college and in in the workplace. How do you consider success? Is it by making sure, I know educators are so hard on themselves. They want every student to get an A and graduate from Harvard, but is it about making sure every student graduates? Is it about making sure every student goes to college? Or how do you set up those measurements? Well, I think it's uh, a minimum that every student graduates and to make sure that they have the basic uh, knowledge to be able to receive a diploma and at least be prepared for an entry level job. But the real challenge, I think, is to make sure kids are prepared uh, to do well in college and to get advanced degrees and to enter into the world of work with, you know, the knowledge and, and the abilities to be able to be successful in their careers. And it's different. I mean, some people really want to go to the workforce right away. Some people want to go to community colleges and others want to head directly to a four-year school. So is it difficult to try and say we absolutely want these things and you set a, a, a blockade around everything Well, else? I, I think our, our challenge and our, uh, what we're charged with is to make ki sure kids have options. So no matter what path they want to pursue after high school, that they have the skills and they have uh, the knowledge and uh, they have the attributes to be able to take whatever path that is, whether it's going into a four-year university or going into um, a job. I know a number of elected officials on the state level are talking about, they call it multiple pathways, and they're trying to set up legislation around that. So students can, they can choose whichever, whatever their natural attributes are, that they mm -hmm. can pursue those avenues. Yeah, that's actually um, at the center of our reform efforts for our high schools and our middle schools. We're looking at multiple pathways as a way of bringing some relevance and meaning to our instruction so that kids understand why they're learning what they're learning. And it connects to their future goals, both in college and uh, in the world of work. And so multiple pathways is, is I think, uh, it's actually the future of secondary education. What other kind of policies or other kinds of measurement or tools have you put in place to achieve these goals? Well, we look at uh, academic performance in all of the content areas how well they do on standardized tests, like the API scores, API scores. Uh, we look at dropout rates, graduation rates, uh, we look at other measures, uh, even parent satisfaction, student satisfaction. So we have a, a range of measures to, to be able to judge whether or not we're providing a, an engaging, uh, adequate, high quality program for kids. Is it different in the 21st century, the way that you work with and speak with and I guess motivate a student than maybe it was when you and I were going to K through 12? Well, I think there's, uh, there's more of an urgency. Um, I think because um, things are competitive and because of uh, the need to compete in a more global um, you know, economy, that kids need, uh, you know, there's more of an urgency to provide them with the basic skills and the other attributes that they need to be successful. And what about the role of the community? It's absolutely essential that uh, the community engages in providing this type of uh, educational experience for kids. No longer can public schools do it on their own. It really takes the resources and the attributes of, of a community, business, industry to be able to provide that type of right. uh, educational experience. Right. Very well said, sir. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your time. Thank you. For Charter Local Edition, I'm Tracy Young.